Shalom, Christopher Enoch here. The gift of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues and what they call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a true story. I want to tell you uh, what I experienced. Okay, I want to take you all the way back to pretty much my childhood. Now, I spent a lot of time growing up with, uh, with my grandmother. And she was related, like, I guess she would be called a niece or something to that effect to, uh, to a, a very uh, well-known preacher in the area. Almost, you might call him a revivalist. And so she would tell me I was like a, I was a boy at the time. I was a very young boy. And she would tell me stories of people, she said, that were swinging from the chandeliers in church and speaking in tongues. And she'd be talking about this kind of thing and talking about how, uh, what, the, what, what these people would do and, and how uh, this particular preacher was very, very dramatic and very, very charismatic. And so when I heard about swinging from the rafters um, and um, speaking in tongues, I really didn't know what to think about it. I just thought, wow, you know, like, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm a boy. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up in a church going home. But my grandmother used to tell me that story every once in a while where uh, she would either attend the church or she would hear about it because, like I said, a, a fairly close relative was the actual preacher behind it all. So, um, yeah, so I grew up hearing, or hearing excuse me, about speaking in tongues. Didn't know a lot about it. As a teenager, uh, this would have been years after my, um, my father passed away. And um, as a teenager, I got, uh, I was hanging around with a lot of people that uh, would not be the best people to hang around with, put it that way. Okay, these are people that um, one particular guy that I can think of was a guy that was, uh, a, a, you know, a, a self-proclaimed uh, uh, an admitted uh, Satanist, where he would uh, have a Satanic Bible and this kind of thing. And uh, he would say, he said to me on a number of occasions, he said to me, "Hey, you know what? Do you know how these Pentecostals speak in tongues?" And he would start. This, this speaking what it sounded like some kind of language, like some kind of unknown language, and he would start speaking it. Now, I know this guy wasn't, wasn't saved. He was, uh, you know, he was admitted, he admitted that he was a worshiper of Satan. He would be doing all kinds of, you know, things that he thought was, uh, you know, it, with, along the satanic ways. Uh, very, very strange, very, very... Uh, you know, bad things. Um, so this guy was certainly not a guy that you would say would have the Spirit of God. Not at all. Um, didn't live it. I mean, he was a crazy guy. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I think you get the point. Um, and from time to time, as a teenager now, I, I didn't think much of it again. I, I just thought, wow, man, this was you know, this, is, this sounds pretty cool. So from time to time, I'd say, that, I'd say to this guy, I'd say, hey, hey, uh, speak in tongues, you know, and, he would, and he, would just, he would just burst out in this language that would just, uh, you know, um, uh, that would just sound like a different unknown language. And I thought, wow, you know, wow, you got the ability to at least mimic a, another language or, or sound like you're speaking in another language. And so as time went on and uh, I had a dramatic and powerful experience with God, that changed my life forever. Um, I never really thought too much of it. I got involved with uh, uh, a couple different churches in the area. One of the churches was a Pentecostal church, um, and so they would there would be this one guy that would that would always break out in what they call speaking in tongues, and then there would be another person that would, you know. Uh, tr at least appear to be interpreting it and that kind of thing. So I spent some time at that church. Then I went on to another church, which was much more, um, oh, what's the word for it? Much more lively. Like it was, it was one of the televised churches. 
uh, one of the, the the preacher actually was a very uh, well known preacher in the area, and he preached all he preached in different countries throughout the world. And uh, one of the things they were very strong on was speaking in tongues. It's like you get saved first by basically saying the sinner's prayer, and after that you have to receive the Holy Spirit, and you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the way you're baptized in the Holy Spirit is you come forward and you have someone lay their hands on you and you have someone pray, pray over you and you have someone, you know, um, uh, tell you to start speaking uh, syllables and, and you'd start, you'd start uh, speaking in this, it sounded like a different language after a while and some people had a hard time with it. Well, there was this, uh, in that church, there was a, a prayer meeting that they, that they held one hour before every service. And it was basically open to the public, although not a whole lot of people went. There was maybe about ah, 20, 30 people that went to this prayer meeting, or uh, I guess you would call it this prayer time. Um, so I went there. It was a small room. It was like a classroom size. And uh, I'll never forget this. Because uh, it was led up by the, uh, it was led by the assistant pastor at the time, and he got up there and he started speaking about Daniel chapter nine, about how Daniel prayed, and he talked about praying in your understanding and praying in the spirit. So he would say that you know if you're praying in your understanding, that's basically not praying in the spirit. But if you pray in the spirit, then you just turn off your intellect, so to speak, and just start what they call praying in the spirit. And so he said, okay, let's, everybody, let's, uh, let's, let's not pray with our understanding here. Let's pray in the Spirit. And so everybody just got up out of their seats. Okay, it was set up like a, like a classroom style. And everybody just got up out of their seats, and they, wa- and they went to the back of the room, and they started pacing and walking around, and they started speaking. Everybody started speaking in what sounded like other languages. And I'm like, hey, you know, I was a young guy I was just in my early 20s back then I was like wow oh yeah, this is actually I wasn't even that let me think how old was I oh probably about 1920 uh at the time and so I was like wow like this is amazing so I just joined right in with them I just thought oh if this is how you do it this is how you do it so I I, I was into I was into it okay I was into Every kind of every church I went to for a number of years, I was really into it. I went to every one of their uh, uh, meetings. I went to every one of their services. I went every I went to every one of their conferences. I went to every one every time the doors were open, I was there. And so, yeah, I, I just jumped up and I thought I'll just do what everybody else is doing. So I would go back and forth, pace up and down. I'll go shema I just started talking like that. And I'm going, and I wouldn't really, I mean, I thought, oh, here, here I am, you know, just kind of talking away like this. And, you know, I didn't really tell it much of anybody at the time. I just, I just went to these meetings and I started just doing that. And during the services, when they say, okay, everybody pray in the spirit, you know, everybody would lift up their hands and, and start praying or start speaking like this. And I, I would do the same thing. I would just lift up my hands and I would go, and so I was, into it for, uh, a while, uh, just right into that kind of scene. And, uh, and then I went to a different church after a while. And that church I went to uh, was more, pen- more charismatic, less Pentecostal, if you know what I mean. They focused more on moving in the, sp- or the spiritual, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and less on tongues. For example, a lot of uh, people praying for people, falling down, a lot of uh, visions and so-called prophecies and a lot of people you know, uh, just reacting to the Spirit and all this kind of thing, okay? And so I started noticing that the church that I was, you know, the second, the, the second church I'm talking about was a little bit more like they were, it seemed to be more um, deeper uh, in, 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 in everything, basically. Because the previous church, the one that, that was speaking in tongues a lot, was, um, I'll call it Church A, and the later one I'll call it Church B. 
Church A uh, was very, very aggressive in, 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 their, in their ways. Um, they would be very aggressive in their, evan in their outreaches, in their evan evangelical work. They would go, uh, they would send people out in, uh, on the streets and pull them in. They would, they would go door to door and try to get people to come to their church. They would hold festivals. Actually, the pastor even hired somebody to fly a plane over the whole city and advertise the church. It's just very aggressive. But Church B, the church that I attended after that, was very, very passive in a way. Yet, they had millions of people that came through that church. And the, the apparent power, what I mean by power, is people that seem to be very, very extremely touched by God. In, in, in like, you know, lots of testimonies, lots of people saying their lives were changed. Lots of people coming uh, to the church. Um, the, the apparent power was much greater and in the, in the attendance. People would come from all over the world to go to that church. In fact, um, that church was, was designated, uh, the, rumor has it, it was designated as, a, as the number one tourist attraction uh, of that city uh, for a period of time. So I started thinking about it. I started thinking, well, there's names in the charismatic world such as Catherine Kuhlman. Okay, some of you people might have heard of Catherine Kuhlman. And uh, some of you people would know that Catherine Kuhlman is known for being what they call anointed. And uh, some people say that Catherine Kuhlman was one of the most anointed preachers in all of, you know, the history of Christianity. You know, some people say that. Some people believe that. Um... Some people believe that the level of the Spirit of God that Catherine Kuhlman had was so much greater uh, than any of the preachers today. Yet, Catherine Kuhlman did not ever speak in tongues. So I started thinking about these things. You know, I want to, I want to, uh, the truth uh, would stand the test. Okay, I started thinking about these things. Well, Church A was very, very strong on speaking in tongues. And if you didn't speak in tongues, you didn't have it. If you didn't speak in tongues, you didn't have it, okay? Church B was, you never hear much about speaking in tongues at all. Um, but yet, there was a lot of the other different kinds of spiritual phenomena that was hap happening. So I started thinking a whole lot about it. And um, I started thinking about Back in my early days, when I was, when I used to hang around with that guy that claimed to be a Satanist, or actually he was more, more or less a Satanist, and he could speak in tongues. And I started thinking to myself, the way that I saw these churches beha behave, the way they operate, is that, you know, especially Church A, this one that's all about speaking in tongues. If you don't have speaking in tongues, you're not baptized in the Spirit. Um, the way they are is you need it. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have it, come forward. We'll lay, your, we'll, we'll lay our hands on you and, you know, and, and we will get you baptized in the Spirit. And that's basically what they were like. We'll, we'll get you baptized in the Spirit. You know, and if you don't start speaking in other languages right away, we'll, we'll, incur, we'll tell you. Start, start with s s syllables like ka, ka, ma, ma, sha, na, ti, na, like all this stuff and just start and keep it going and go home. Oh, yeah, and go home and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Become fluent. You got you to gotta practice in order to become fluent in your heavenly language is what they would say. So I started thinking, you know what? If that guy that I used to hang around with back in my darker days, if that guy would have went to a Pentecostal church or a Word of Faith, Word of Life, Assembly of God type, Holy, you know, baptism in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues kind of church, if he would have went to that kind of church and went forward, and if, and if someone would have laid their hands on him, and if he would have started doing what he did, like just start speaking in, in gibberish, um which sounded like tongues. I, I mean, you would never be able to tell the difference by just mere audible, I mean, just by hearing it, no. Um, the pastor and everybody there would be going, oh, praise God, brother, you, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God, brother. Oh, bless God. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. You're baptized. You got the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I thought to myself, you know what? These people in these churches are so shallow. 
They're so shallow. If they would have this Satanist come to their church and, and go forward and speak in tongues as that guy did, as, I, um, as I've witnessed so many, so many times. When I know he's not. I know he wasn't saved. I know he was far from it, okay? If I, if I tell you some of the stuff he did, and uh, I, mean, I mean, Satanist, okay? Um, what more can I say? Um, not full of the spirit at all. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if that guy would have went forward in a, in a church like that and started speaking in his language, they would say, Oh, bless God. Praise God. Hallelujah, man. You're baptized in the spirit of God. Welcome. You know, that's great, brother. You've got it. You've got the gift. You've got it. You've, you've reached the epitome of spirituality. <sighs> really? You know what? Um, if, if he would have went into one of those churches and started speaking like that, they would have said that. They would have. You know, those of you who know what I'm talking about, these churches that are baptized, be baptized in the Spirit by, by the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so that's the only evidence they use to try to, that's the only evidence they use to diagnose you or to uh, proclaim that you've got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the only evidence. The only thing that they use is whether or not you speak in other tongues, okay? Um, so I started seeing in Church B, kind of like the same kind of thing as what I saw in Church A. What, in Church B, there were more along the lines of prophetic kind of stuff, like see visions, hear the, hear the voice of God, all this kind of stuff. And they're trying to push it on other people too in a very subtle way. Subtle, but yet strong way too. Trying to, you know, just pushing on, the, on like everybody needs to hear the voice of God. Everybody needs to be, uh, to prophesy, to see visions. Just like Church A was like, everybody needs to speak in tongues. Or if you don't, you just don't have it. And so I started seeing that the gifts, the so-called gifts, I say so-called gifts of the Spirit are so fabricated today. Fabricated. Yes, fabricated. Because you don't see it in the book of Acts where people go forward and you got Peter or James or John putting their hands on them and encouraging them and trying to teach them how to speak in tongues doesn't happen. It did not happen. Did not work that way. And it doesn't work that way. Do I, do I believe that, that the gift of tongues is in operation today? The true gift of tongues as per book of Acts? Yeah, it is in operation today. But it's way rarer than what you believe, what you know, what you've heard. Most, by far most, if not almost all of the people who claim to be baptized in the Spirit and speaking in tongues today does not have the true gift of speaking in tongues. They just, they have been taught by men to, to talk like a baby more or less. I mean, I've seen it more, I've seen it over and over again, these little toddlers, they can talk. They can talk like that. You know, babies, they go, I mean, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, babies can talk like that, more or less. And you start talking like that in one of these churches, some of these churches that are so shallow, they'd say, oh, you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When in all of the, you know, to tell you the truth, in all truth, it's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a, it's a skill taught by men. It's not the gift, the sovereign gift of God. Paul the Apostle made it very clear. Not everybody gets the gift of speaking in tongues. He was very clear about that. Not everybody. The body of Christ has many parts. You got the, you know, if everybody was one big tongue, if the whole body was one big tongue, you'd have a monster. If the whole body was one big eye, you'd have a monster. No, sure you have, you know, the you have the few people that actually do see visions today that do really get unction and feel the, uh, the leading of the Spirit of God. And there are maybe a very, very few people that actually really have the, the gift of speaking in tongues, but not the way it is uh, advertised today. So, yeah. 
Speaking in tongues, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, it is in operation today, but a lot of it is just fabricated. Like Jeremiah in the, in the gift of uh, so-called gift of prophecy, he said, you prophesy from your own spirit. You prophesy from your own mind, from your own imagination, from your own spirit, from your own emotions. You don't prof it's not the Spirit of God. And so many, and you know what it is? It is, a, it is arrogance and pride in these vain, empty Christians that they think, they, oh yeah, look at how spiritual I am. I can speak in tongues. Yeah, na na sakamana. I mean, hey, look how spiritual I am. I, I can look look how great I am. I hear the voice of God all the time. Look how much I am. like. Even Moses. I mean, you look at look at Numbers chapter twelve. Okay, like Aaron and 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 Miriam said. Hey, if Moses can do it, we can do it. Hey, if Moses, if Moses can hear from God and, and, and speak on God's behalf, we can too. Look at Moses. He can't even talk. He, he's got a speech impediment. He can't, nobody can, he can't even talk. If God can use someone like this, he can use anybody. And God came down and struck Miriam with leprosy. He said, basically, he said to Miriam and Aaron, Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Moses is the most humble man in all the earth. What a statement. Moses is the most humble man in all the earth. I speak to him face to face. I, none of the other prophets I speak to like, like I speak to Moses. I give them dark riddles and sayings and you know, partial visions and all this kind of stuff. But with Moses, I appear to him and speak to him face to face. Yeah, so I got, we, we got people today that walk around basically more or less thinking they're better than Moses. I mean, hey, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a pride issue. It's like these people, they need to have something that, they, that makes them feel like they're more important than they really are. So how do we do it? Listen to me. I got the gift of speaking in tongues. I got the gift. I got it. I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, really? No, you don't. Jesus said you will know them by the fruits, by their fruit, not by their gifts, okay? The gift of God is just the gift of God. God can give anything and anybody gifts. Jesus said he can raise up children of Abraham from stones. Uh, he caused a donkey to speak in tongues, so to speak. The donkey spoke a tongue that Balaam could understand that the donkey never even learned. I mean, hey, uh, the donkey could speak. Uh, God's gifts don't mean anything. They really don't. They do not give you credibility. All they, if, if it's, if, even if it's a real true gift, and like I said, most of it, by far, almost everything out there in, in regards to prophecy today and in regards to speaking in tongues today is all fabricate, fabricated false gifts. But even if it was a true gift, what does it prove? It doesn't prove anything. I mean, it's a gift. You didn't earn it. I mean, it, God, gave, God gives gift, gifts to everything. Like Jesus said, look at the flower of the field. It's adorned and it's, it's more, it has more beauty than even Solomon had. I mean, so does that mean the flower is, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, do not judge things by their gifts. Judge them by their fruit. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit you know it by, a, by the person's fruit, not by the gifts, okay? Now, not everywhere in the scriptures it says that those who are baptized in the Spirit are speaking tongues. Yeah, in a, in a few places it does say that, but it doesn't say that everywhere. And you've got to really blind yourself and believe all this nonsense if you think, if it's, if, if, if you think otherwise, because it's not. People, get, people receive the Spirit of God. People get baptized in the Spirit without speaking in tongues. Paul said it clearly. Not everybody speaks in tongues. Not everybody's a prophet. You know, not everybody is out there serving tables. Not everybody's out there preaching. Everybody's got their own place in the body of Christ. And you gotta, you gotta be comfortable with who you are, where you are, and where God wants you to be. Okay? I'm, I don't agree with any of these churches or any of these pre preachers that that say that you must speak in tongues or you must hear from God. Hey, if you want to hear from God, open the Bible. <laughs> hey, most of these people that claim to hear from God, they don't have no clue about the scripture. Why don't you get that down first? 
get it down. I mean, get it down first. Then, then, then you can worry about the extra, you know, the extra stuff, okay? So many people are out there searching, seeking for gifts when they're just neglecting reading the scriptures that they should be studying. You know, as Paul, Paul said, study to show yourself approved. So yeah, the gift of tongues does exist. It's not for everybody. Being baptized in the Spirit does not mean you have to speak in tongues. You can be baptized in the Spirit and not speak in any kind of tongue at all. You can be baptized in the Spirit and just go out there and just be an extension of God's hand to the world and blessing people and, uh, you know, and, and just being a wonderful blessing to this generation and to this age. So yeah, um, I know the question, questions would be by, some people would, uh, question would be, how do I know that this gift of tongues is authentic? How do I know it's true? And how do I know it's false? Well, if it's, I mean, there's two different ways to know. Um, one way is in the scriptures, you see it where, someone speaks in a tongue that they've never learned and someone else understands it completely. Like, hey, like in the book of Acts chapter 2, people from all over the world were there. There's, uh, the the uh, disciples spoke in tongues and uh, people from other parts of the world were there and they understood what they were saying. One of those tongues probably was English, an ancient form of English, probably. Um, yeah, so who knows? I might be speaking in tongues right now, okay? <laughs> I mean, let's get our mind out of the shallow, the waiting pool, okay? Let's think a little bit deeper. Um, so that's one way to find out. If you know that there's somebody, like, I know, I was at a church once where one of the, uh, uh, one of the elder, basically one of the elders of the church, he was an elderly man, uh, he was an elderly white man, and uh, the Spirit of God came on him and he started shouting all these different and just sound like, hey, bye, like kind of, I mean, just sounded uh, just like just typical, just shouting, but he had a little bit of, sounded like maybe another language in there. Well, there was this Japanese gentleman that was sitting beside him, and, he, and the Japanese guy said, hey, I didn't know you speak Japanese. And the, guy, and the guy's like, I, I, don't, I don't speak Japanese. And he said, well, yeah, you were. He's like, w was I? Really? He said, yeah. When you were shouting, you were shouting, Jesus is number one in Japanese. So here, that's a good example of a true, the true gift of speaking in tongues. Um, there are many other examples through the ages, okay? So yeah, it does happen. Um, that's one way to find out is if there's someone else that is actually can actually really confirm, yeah, you are actually speaking in another language that I understand that you've never learned that you don't even know about. Now, another thing is, and this is much more difficult to prove because of the complications. Say you're in a church and someone just jumps up and starts speaking in a fabricated tongue. And then somebody stands up and, and they start fabricating a prophecy. They start fabricating an interpretation. They go, ah, thus saith the Lord, this church is going to be blessed of God and, and the wave of the Spirit is coming. You know, the same old stuff. So how do you prove that? Well, um, first of all, you'd have to start with the so-called interpreter because that's supposed to be the medium between, <coughs> excuse me, between the tongue talker and the rest of the people. So is what the interpreter is saying, is that true? Is it really applicable? Is he really, really prophesying the way a prophet should be prophesying? I mean, if it's all just, like I've, I've heard this, when it's just all just blessing. Oh, the Lord's going to just bless everybody. Everybody's going to get a new job, a new, you know, a promotion in their job, and a new car, and a new house, and, and there's a wave of the Spirit's going to come on this church, and there's going to be a revival that breaks out in this church, and yada, 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 yada. And there's never, and you got people sitting in the front row that are pimps and drug addicts or whatever else, and there's never any rebuke of sin. Yeah, there's a problem. I mean, look at Paul. Again, in, in, uh, in his letter to the Corinthians, he said, you know, when an unbeliever walks into uh, 
uh, to the, uh, basically a church, and he hears you uh, prophesying, and, you, and, he hear, and the prophets call out the secret sins of his heart. The secrets of his heart are laid bare, and he falls down before everybody and repents. I mean, that's a good sign of a true prophet. A true prophet would cause the sinners to repent and come to God, not feel comfortable in their sin. Okay? So if, if you got people feeling, if you got prophets, so called prophets or interpreters of, 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 uh, of tongues that are just blessing all the time or just saying vain or ambiguous things all the time, you should put a stop to it. I mean, it's fake, it's false. Okay? Both the tongue talker and the interpreter is false. Even if the tongue talker wasn't false, he shouldn't be talking in tongues unless there was a true interpreter there. But you know what I mean. I mean, 99.999% of the time, both of them would be a, it's just a fake thing anyway. Do they, do they talk in tongues or interpret and do they know, do they believe it's fake? Do they know what they're doing is, is, is just a fabrication? No, I think that most of them believe that what they're doing is, is, is true and, and they believe in it. Um, you know, that makes it, uh, uh, almost makes it worse because it's like uh, it's hard for them to, uh, to acknowledge that what they're doing is really um, not the true, uh, n not the true way of doing it. It's not, it's not true, it's not the true gift of the Spirit at all. So yeah, that's, there you have it. Um, there's a short little story and some of the things I've learned about speaking in tongues and about being baptized in the Spirit of God. If you're baptized in the Spirit of God, you do not have to speak in tongues. One of the things that's, uh, one of the greatest things is your fruit, okay? That you have been born again, all of the old is gone, the sinful ways are gone, the new has come. You live holy, you live righteous, you live and you walk in, in, in a way that you've never walked before. You treat people better than you've ever treated them before. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know them by the fruit. So there you go. There you go. There you have it. Um, once again, thanks again for watching and, um, you know, stick around and, uh, check out my other videos and make sure you subscribe. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be having lots of new videos coming in the future and lots of things I want to share that I've learned. Thanks a lot and, uh, blessings.